Greetings to everyone from around the world. This is a Sunday sermon recording from Father Mike of Our Lady of the Hills Parish here in Southwest Ohio. I am your host, Ishmael Ali, and here is Father Mike's sermon. And he found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. And Jesus made a whip out of cords, and he drove them all out of the temple area, wished the sheep and the oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to Jesus, What sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. When Jesus was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs Jesus was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I've been a priest for, set, for 42 years. It is a great honor for me to say this is the first time I've ever had a, a girl server have a veil on her head. It looks very pretty. Let's give her a round of applause. <clears throat> Having said that, now we'll do the sermon. One of my favorite movies is Oh God from 1977. Have anyone seen that movie? Okay, you know what I'm talking. Isn't that a great movie? It, it, God appears in this movie. God appears as a kindly old man played by George Burns. Christian, do you know who George Burns is? You don't. Know. <laughs> We're of a different era, right? A different era. George Burns was probably one of the greatest comedians of the last century. And... Uh, he had a TV show and everything. So George Burns, as God, goes to this assistant grocery manager named Jerry Landers. That's played by John Denver. Do you know who John Denver is? Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> Christian, you're making me feel really old here. You got to listen to his records. They were great. What's that song, Take Me Home? Country Road. Country Road. That's John Denver. <sighs> These kids don't get education like they should have. <laughs> well, anyways, I digress. So, John Denver plays Jerry. Now, God has chosen him to be his messenger to a world that has grown corrupt. And I remember the one scene in this movie where God sent Jerry to confront a mega church preacher. And he used his preaching, though, to grow rich for himself. And the preacher was wearing all-white suit like the Pope. And he waxes eloquently, saying, The Bible tells us God knows the falling of a sparrow and the depth of your pocket. <laughs> and then it reminded me of the comedian Comedian Gary Burbank on WLW. Remember him? Do you know him, Christian? 
And uh, now, okay, forget. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> well, anyways, Gary Burbank, he played this preacher, Reverend Skaggs, and he told his flock, "Don't make me holla, don't make me shout, turn those pockets inside out." And that's what's going on in the movie here, because the preacher's obviously doing a grift, you know, promising them all types of things that probably won't come true. And so uh, in the movie, you, you see these people coming up to this preacher who is played by Paul Sorvino, really like that actor. And, and the people are coming up and are giving them all their money, you know, they're in wheel, wheelchairs and crutches and, and they can't see or hear some of them, but they're giving this preacher all the money that they had. And so Jerry, he doesn't like what he sees because God told him, that this is bad, this grift, taking the poor people's money. And so Jerry courageously approaches the altar to interrupt this stealing. And he tells the preacher God is unhappy with him, that he is getting rich by manipulating people to give him all their money. And he told the preacher to stop pretending that he speaks, that he speaks for God. He doesn't. And Jerry concludes by saying, God suggests to you, preacher, that you go back selling shoes. Because <laughs> that's what he used to do. If you need to make money, do it honestly. Go sell your shoes. And of course, the preacher is infuriated. And he tells his, his uh, security staff, get him out of here, get him out. And Jerry replies, well, that's what God said. And it's a great movie. It really is. You, you should watch it. Now, today, in the gospel, Jesus takes the role of Jerry in the cleansing of the temple. Jesus was peeved. He was very angry when he, all, when he saw all the grift, all the stealing that was being done in the name of God to worship God. You see, at those days when you went to the temple for the Passover, anyone 20 years old and up had to make a donation to the temple priests. I could roll with that, you know. <laughs> but here's what happened. These young people would have to change their common money for temple money. And it was called Tyrian. T-Y-R-I-A-N, Tyrian money, which was the purest of, of silver coins. Really, really expensive. And a lot of stealing occurred during the exchange of the currency. They cheated the people by not giving them enough Tyrian silver, but they took all their money. And then, if you wanted to make a sacrifice to God on one of the altars, they had a lot of altars, and you could buy a dove or sheep or even an oxen if you're rich. And you make this sacrifice to God. Guess what? You had to buy only temple approved animals. And the sheep and the oxen animals were marked up. They marked it up because you're stuck. There's nowhere else to get them. It's kind of like when I went to the Beta Lugosi Film Festival in Pittsburgh, and the rooms doubled in price to $400 a night because Taylor Swift was in town. I don't like Taylor Swift. <laughs> Cost me a lot of money. I, I should write to her. <laughs> give, me some, give me back 400 bucks. But that's what was going on. You get the idea. You know, they were grifting. Now, at first, the business was done outside the temple. On, actually on the foothills of Mount Olivet, where Jesus went a lot of times to pray. The Mount of Olives. I think that's where the uh, agony in the garden occurred, right there at the Mount of Olives. But as business grew, they moved inside to get a better location. So all these businesses moved right into the temple to be more competitive, because remember in business, it's location, location, location. So they would get right up there in the temple itself. Imagine a worshiper 
a holy devout worshiper coming to worship God and make a little sacrifice of an animal for God and in order to do it they had to walk through sheep poop because that the sheep were in the sanctuary they're like putting sheep up here they poop a lot and that's they had this I'm not sure that's what they had to do they walked through very unsanitary conditions and then you had these like carnival barkers screaming out to exchange money. Best rates in town over here. And so they had to listen to all these people you know, screaming out for a good deal. God's house became a flea market. And Jesus could not contain his anger that the holiest place on earth housed a den of thieves. That's why Jesus got so angry. It doesn't say he hit anybody, a person, but he hit the animals and drive them out and turned over the tables. But he did not hit any human. God is not abusive. He would not do that. But he, God was very angry. So Jesus not only cleansed the temple, but he makes this dramatic proclamation that's important for our lives. It'll change your life. Jesus said, destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. That's John 2, verse 19. Jesus is declaring that now he, his body, his body is the temple of God. And to make sure that everyone understands the importance of what Jesus said. John writes two verses later, verse 21, he left no doubts when John wrote, he was speaking about the temple of his body. No doubt there. Here is why this proclamation is so important. And it will change your life. Since Jesus is the new temple of God, and anyone who loves Jesus, who believes in Jesus, who desires a close relationship with Jesus, who's on fire for Jesus, anyone like that also becomes a temple for God. You become God's holy place. He's right inside. The glory of God will shine as it shined through the body of Jesus, remember last week at the transfiguration and the light came through his body, that same glory, that same light will now radiate from your body. Jesus is inside there. Now my body, I got a big one to hold all the glory. So it's okay to be fat because you get all the glory in there, you know. I'm a big temple, I'm a basilica. but. The same Jesus, let me tell you this, the same Jesus that's in there is in here, your heart, your soul, your very body. You are walking tabernacles of God, temples of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and Jesus said this, don't take my word, listen to Jesus. John 14, 23, <clears throat> if anyone loves me, and that's you, that's why you're here today. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home within him. Isn't that awesome? That just blows my mind. My little old body is a temple for God. And the temple is a place where God dwells. So he dwells in you. He made your body his temple. Listen to what Jesus says again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, Jesus says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You're not your own anymore. God got you. God has you. You're for God now. He bought you at a great price. 
right there. That's the price. Because of that, he made you his home. You belong to God. Now, in this wonderful reality, what should our response be? Like, what should we do? Number one, cleanse your temple. <laughs> Clean it out. Clean your soul. Get rid of the dust bunnies of sin and remove from your temple any impurity like selfishness or greed or pride. Get rid of it. That's why we have Lent. We're house cleaning. Got a lot of house cleaning to do. Clean out your soul of sin. And then second, open wide the doors of your temple to reveal God. Let God's light shine forth through your acts of Kindness, love, care, almsgiving, all those good things you do. When you do them, it's like, as we open that tabernacle to show Jesus, you will open the doors of your soul, and through your good deeds and kindness, God's light will shine through you. Remember, Scripture said, see how they love one another. Those Christians, see how they love one another. It's the best witness to God you could ever give. It's the greatest revelation of Jesus that he so desires. My brothers and sisters, when I was writing this, middle writing this, I got a call on my phone and I was from a, a parishioner at Holy Trinity and the parishioner was distraught and I said, what's wrong? And she said, tell me if I did right or wrong, Father, I don't know. I said, well, what did you do? And she said, I welcomed into my home a neighbor who was gay. Was I allowed to do that? And I told her, honey, that's what God wants you to do. You know what? That man met Jesus today, and he met him through you, your kindness. Your love of welcoming. I said, you did just what Jesus would want. Don't be afraid. Don't feel guilty. Rejoice that God used you to bring to that man God's love. And I told her, bring him to church. Because that's what God would want. All of us are sinners, aren't we? <laughs> All of us. If, if I determined that only holy people to come to this church and at Mass, I think the only one who would be eligible would be Violet. I think you're, you, maybe, maybe even that's questionable if you get mad at your mom or something. <laughs> but you see, we're all sinners in our own way. When you got one finger pointing out at a sinner, you got the three pointing right back at you, don't you? So. Let us make Jesus alive and real by opening our tabernacle door of love. I want to close with a line from the movie, Oh God. It's where God tells Jerry not to worry about those who do not yet believe in God. He said, through George Burns, if you find it hard to believe in me, maybe it will help to know that I believe in you. God believes in you. He believes in you so much. That's why he paid that price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Happy Lent. Amen. And after Mass is donuts, so we can have bigger temples to bring in more glory. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This recording of Father Mike's sermon was produced and edited by me, Ish Ali. The intro music is Amazing Grace, sung by LaGrave Avenue CRC of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you to Father Mike for a great sermon. Previous recordings of Father Mike's sermons can be found at stmaryhillsborough.org, that's S-A-I-N-T, 
mary.hillsborough.org and on the St. Mary Hillsborough YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this program, please donate and help sponsor future sermon recordings. You can send checks to St. Mary Catholic Church, 212 South High Street, Hillsborough, Ohio, 45133. All donations are tax deductible and greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening.